Thermal Imaging webinar in conjunction with Hikvision. Thanks for joining us. I'm Graeme White, Sales Director at Atlas World, and we look forward to showing the advantages of thermal imaging and how it can be used to detect elevated temperatures within people. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat box and we will answer them at the end. I would like to welcome Charlie and Joan from Hikvision to present the webinar. Charlie and Joan have been presenting numerous webinars over the past number of months. And I think even today, this is their uh, fourth or fifth one that they've actually been uh, presenting uh, and will be available for the Q&A at the end. So uh, I'm just going to hand over to Charlie and John just to, to start the presentation. Hello, everybody. It's John here. Uh, Charlie's probably going to lead this initially. So Charlie's got the presentation and is ready to move. Do you want to introduce yourself there, Charlie? I, I will, Sean. Thanks. <laughs> uh, my, my name is Charlie Murta. I'm a product engineer. I was working with Big Fish now for, for just under uh, four years now. So probably for the next half an hour, uh, we'll discuss our temperature screening offering. So I'll just start the presentation now. So temperature screening itself has been around for probably 20 years uh, or more. Uh, real body temperature can be determined using a medical thermometer inside your ear. Uh, temperature screening, is, which is what we are offering, is used to collect skin surface temperature. Uh, it can detect abnormal temperature. However, once detected, the abnormal temperature should be confirmed by using a medical thermometer. So in terms of what we're going to cover today, uh, we'll go through some of the uh, uh, thermal principle. Then we'll move on to the process, so thermal temperature screening process, uh, in terms of what solutions we're, we're offering. And then we've uh, some showcases and comparisons then to show you at the end. So in terms of principle, uh, any object with temperatures above absolute zero emits a detectable amount of radiation. So a thermal camera converts IR radiation or, or heat radiation into grayscale values and matches grayscale values uh, to temperature values through uh, an algorithm model. But basically what we've done is we've put a more advanced chipset within the camera housing itself. Uh, we've reduced the temperature range to uh, 30 to 45 degrees, uh, thus allowing us to introduce an accuracy of plus or minus uh, 0.5 degrees. So in terms of applications, um, I think we're even finding it uh, now, uh, John, as well, uh, you may have noticed that it's, it's, it's literally every kind of commercial premises, uh, small commercial, large commercial, industrial con construction sites, the, the demand for, for these types of cameras seems to be coming from every type of uh, quarter you can think of. Um, and possibly this time next year, uh, you might find that any type of premises you walk into, that this is probably the first thing you'll meet once you walk through the doors is a temperature screening camera. So in terms of advantages, uh, high, high efficiency. So it takes only one second for a thermal camera to detect the temperature of a person, thus allowing screening of, of large numbers of people at any one time. Safety, thermal cameras feature non-contact <laughs> temperature measurement from about one meter away, avoiding unnecessary physical contact. So obviously the advantage here is a virus can spread through, through physical contact. So, so this is obviously safer than using a medical thermometer uh, as you're keeping your distance from the person itself. So the first thing we, we'd suggest once the camera is purchased, once the camera is set up, is initially we, we'd suggest setting up an actual screening channel. So a screening channel is not necessary to be set up uh, if, if the actual uh, space is narrow, say such as a corridor, However, we would suggest uh, you, you set up a screening channel. So see in the, the image on the, on the bottom right hand side there. So that's just somebody setting up a screening channel. So that's, that's obviously a large area. Potentially there could be, you know, a, a vast amount of people approaching the camera at any one time. So even though these particular cameras can read uh, people's temperatures up to 30 people's temperatures at any one time, we still suggest that you, you, you police the situation and you create a screening channel and try and uh, read people's temperatures using the camera one person at a time. So just on to number three there, thermometer uh, secondary check. 
So for a person identified with a temperature, uh, we're recommending use a uh, thermometer, a medical thermometer, to, to, uh, just to confirm that they, that they actually have an elevated temperature. It's a genuine elevated temperature. So obviously, the, um, as the accuracy uh, is plus or, uh, plus or minus 0.5 degrees uh, within our cameras, if a person's temperature is captured as elevated, we're recommending you use a medical thermometer to, to confirm. So in terms of uh, accuracy, um, as I said, it's, it's plus and minus 0.5 degrees within our camera range. Now we can improve that to plus and minus 0.3 degrees with the introduction of a black body calibrator, which I'll, I'll talk about uh, soon. Uh, but in terms of a medical thermometer, a medical thermometer's accuracy could be anything from plus and minus 0.1 to plus or minus uh, 0.2. So a medical thermometer, you, you might put it in, inside your ear, so you're, you're, you're measuring uh, body temperature, whereas with our device, you're, you're measuring skin surface temperature. So we have three ranges. We have the professional range, eco range, and the handheld range. So the professional range, uh, as you see in there on the right hand side, we're offering it in a, in a bullet style camera. So in terms of setup, it's literally you plug it into a PoE switch. It could be on the network. Your, your laptop or your PC then will be on the, uh, the same network. You'd simply down, in terms of platform then, you'd simply down your, download your IVMS 4200. And then you can witness real-time alarms being sent to the IVMS 4200 from the camera. And you can also witness um, uh, temp temperature readings overlaid on the stream itself within that platform. So in terms of solution advantages, so there, this is a bi-spectrum camera. So within the actual housing, as you look at this, you might notice there's two lenses there. So one is a thermal lens, one, one is an optical lens. In terms of resolution uh, for the thermal, the, the resolution is 384 by 288. But the resolution of the optical, it's, it's 4 megapixel. And again, the accuracy is plus or minus 0.5 degrees for the professional range, uh, like all our ranges. Uh, this can be improved, as I said, to, to plus or minus 0.3 with the introduction of a calibrator, which I'll talk, talk about soon. So installation tips for these, they need to be installed indoors, away from sunlight, away from wind. In terms of what uh, coverage that this particular range offers, if you look on the, the bottom right hand side, so we have our 10 millimeter Pro. Uh, so that relates to the lens, basically it's a 10 millimeter uh, lens. So that's, that will capture a person's temperature from anything from two meters away up to seven meters away and offers a width of 4.4 meters. For the 15 millimeter pro, uh, the detection area, the distance, it will capture a person's temperature from two, 2.5 to nine meters away and offers a width of 3.9 meters. So I'll just run through a video here now of you. So this is what you'd, you'd witness uh, once set up. You'll have a, an optical view, say, at the top, uh, and a, a thermal view down the bottom. So I'll just play these videos here. So you can see there, as they walk in there, you probably see it more clearer in the optical image. So the blue box, that's your detection area that the engineer would set up on site for you. So as the guys walk in there, it's, uh, it's reading their, their, their temperatures. So what we've actually introduced within the camera itself is a deep and view algorithm. So what this uh, uses is face detection. So i will actually, so we use this to, to rule out false alarms. So the algorithm will actually use face detection. So we'll detect a person's face and then give you the temperature reading of that face. And more specifically in our case, it's the temperature reading of, of the forehead. So the reason why we introduced this is because if we didn't have this, potentially the thermal camera would hone in and say something like a, a hot cup of tea that somebody might have in their person and this could create false alarms so with the with the specialized algorithm it's using a face detection it's looking to detect the face first of all and then it's going to give you the temperature reading of that face and you can see there the temperature reading overlaid on the stream itself So next is our eco range. Uh, so on the right hand side there, within this range, we're, we're offering it in a turret style uh, camera and a bullet style as well. So similar, similar to the professional range, uh, very easy installation. It's literally plugged into a PoE switch uh, for power that would be on the network. And then again, your, your laptop, or your PC be on the network. 
of the IBMS 4200, that's your, that's your platform, that's your software that you'd use then to witness the real time elevated temperature alarms being sent to, to the software. And also you can witness um, uh, temperature readings overlaid on the stream itself. So solution advantages, again, like the professional series, it's a, it's a bi-spectrum camera. So within the housing itself, it's an optical lens and a thermal lens. So it's offering you, to, offering you two views, like I showed you there in the, in the video footage. So in terms of uh, resolution for the eco, the resolution of the term, uh, thermal is 160 by 120. For the optical, it's, it's four megapixel resolution. So it's quite high resolution it's offering. So again, this offers the, the AI face detection, uh, like, like the professional series does also. So again, it's looking to detect the face first of all, give it the temperature reading of that face, and more specifically, it's actually giving it the temperature reading of, of the forehead. So the, the reason why we're measuring the temperature reading around the forehead, in pre previous firmwares, we were measuring the, the temperature reading around the eye, but obviously then you're, you're in a case where you have to put up signage then to alert people to remove their glasses and in order to get an accurate temperature reading. So for this, uh, they don't have to remove their glasses. Uh, it's getting the temperature reading from the forehead itself. So installation tips for this um, has to be installed at a 1.5 meters high. And if you, uh, in terms of on the right hand side there, we're offering a six millimeter eco and a three millimeter eco. So again, this is the lens type. So for the six millimeter lensed eco uh, camera, uh, that it will detect a person's temperature from anything from 1.5 meters to, to 3 meters, offering a width of 1.33 meters. For the 3 millimeter eco, it will detect a person's temperature anything from 0.8 meters to 1.5 meters, offering a width of 0.67. So again, the, the eco, like the professional series, it can detect up to 30 people's temperatures at any one time. We are suggesting set up a screening channel and um, said it that uh, you're reading one person's temperature at any one time so it's it's easier to police them have you mentioned sorry for inter interrupting there charlie did you mention the localized alarms that can come out of the economic range as well yeah yeah good 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 point actually john yeah so as, as john was saying there uh, if an elevated temperature is is picked up by the camera itself it's it, the camera it's, uh, it's possible to actually set up linkage within the camera. So the camera has a supplement light built into it, little LED light in the front, and also has a speaker underneath uh, the two lenses as well. So if a person's detected with an elevated temperature, the supplement light within the camera will illuminate and uh, the, an audible message will play from the camera itself. One, one of 10 choices of audible messages you have within the camera. And then very soon, uh, you'll actually be able to customize your own audible message and then import that into the camera. So this, this is a, just a, a video just displaying the eco series. So again, the blue box there is your detection area. As the guys walk into it, you can see the, the green box around their faces. So that's the, the deep and view uh, algorithm. It's detecting the face and then it's giving you the temperature reading overlaid on, on that face. So we just played this again. You can see one of the guys actually simulating a false alarm. So he's simulating a, an elevated temperature alarm by holding up a, a bottle full of hot water up to his forehead. You can see it there on the, the left-hand side. So in terms of this, this is the first introduction, introduction to our, our black body calibrator. So solution advantages, uh, so if you introduce a black body calibrator uh, within the insulation, you can improve the accuracy from plus or minus 0.5 degrees to plus or minus 0.3 degrees. So in terms of installation, uh, the camera will be mounted at 1.5 meters, potentially up to 2.5 meters, depending on whether you go for the professional series or the eco series. The calibrator itself um, has to be installed in the scene. So say if you chose a three millimeter uh, lensed uh, temperature screening camera. The calibrator uh, must be installed no more than one meter away from the caliber from from the camera. If you went say with a five uh, or a fi sorry, sorry a fifteen millimeter lensed uh, temperature screening camera, the uh, black body calibrator can be no more than five meters away from 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 the camera. So 
And many, many of you might ask what, what actually is a black body calibrator. So in, in terms, when you, when you take it out of the box, it's literally you plug it straight into a, a general services socket, uh, you know, 220, 240. There's no physical connection between the black body calibrator or the camera itself. Um, it, it literally um, emits a constant and consistent heat. So in terms of um, our, with our black body calibrators, it's, a, it's emitting 40 degree. So uh, within the camera software then, you tell the camera, you know, there's, there's a black body calibrator within the scene. Um, it's, it's emitting this particular temperature, 40 degrees. So the camera then uses that as, as a reference and then this enables the camera's accuracy to improve then from plus or minus uh, 0.5 to plus or minus 0.3 degrees. So we're, we, we've actually manufactured um, our own uh, black body calibrator. Like most stuff we manufacture ourselves, it's not a third, third party black body calibrator we're offering. So it's fully CE approved. And again, the camera is just using it as, as a particular reference. So we go on to the next slide. This might make it a bit clearer. So this is obviously this video here. This is obviously the camera view you're, you're witnessing here. Uh, the green box is your detection area. On the bottom right, you can see a black body calibrator mounted on a tripod. So as you look at it, uh, the black body calibrator has to be in the scene or the view of, of, of what the camera can actually see. See, but the black body calibrator has to be just outside the detection area. So again, you literally just plug this in. Uh, guys, uh, it takes probably about 15, 20 minutes for the black body calibrator uh, to reach uh, the, 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 the particular temperature. It's, it's the required temperature. And, and that's basically it. And then you go into the camera and you, you tell the camera, there's a black body caliber in the scene. And the camera then will use this as a reference. And this then allows the camera to, to improve its accuracy. So I'll just let this play. It's just really to show you how it'll be set up in the scene. So you see the guys there as they walk through the detection area, their temperatures are being read. And then this is the thermal view of it. the thermal view over there. So in terms of installation, so we have the camera here on the tripod. Again, it can be, it can be wall mounted as well. And the, the black body calibrator, which, is, which we see in this particular image on the right hand side, is just in front of it. This can be tripod mounted or it can be wall mounted or, or ceiling mounted. Uh, preferably though, the uh, black body calibrator shouldn't be any higher than 1.7 meters. So this is the uh, temp temperature screening metal door detector. So on the left hand side there, this, this offers um, uh, uh, two, two scenarios basically. So it's a, it's a temperature screening metal detector door solution offering uh, metal detection and temperature detection. So on the left hand side there, there's actually LEDs, an LED strip on both sides of the door. If a person walks through, through that particular door, that has uh, metal on the person, uh, particular LEDs will illuminate in line with that metal on, on the person. So say, for example, that person was wearing a necklace, a few of the LED bulbs will illuminate in line with the person's neck to, uh, to show the operator that that's, that's exactly where the, uh, the metal is uh, on that particular person. So once the uh, metal is detected, the LED bulbs will, will illuminate, a local alarm will sound, and it will show up in a, in a counter as, at, at the top there, there's four counters there. I'll, go, I'll explain them in a second. In terms of the temperature detection alarm, it's actually just using a, our eco turret, which is inbuilt. You might see it there at the top of the door. It's actually just inbuilt into it. So if a person uh, is detected with an elevated temperature, the LED bulbs will illuminate on both sides of the, the door. But also, as John mentioned, the, the linkage uh, within the camera itself, a supplement light will illuminate from the camera and an audible message will play from the camera as well. So I'll just let this play and then I'll actually just explain the, uh, the counters then. So you can see here the guys walking through on the right hand side. So one of the guys simulates an elevated temperature alarm by holding a cup of tea up to his forehead. You see then the LED uh, 
lights on both sides of the door illuminated and a local sounder and, and um, played and an audible message played. I, I have it on mute at the moment because it interferes with the sound. And just in terms of that, that counter at the top there, so this, this is an LCD screen which offers four numerical displays. So this, this is actually obviously inbuilt. So when you purchase that door, you get the door, um, you get the, the, um, the temperature screen and camera inbuilt, and you also get this LCD screen which offers uh, four numerical displays. So you can see there in terms of the numerical counters, and that's all they are, they're just literally counting. This, the top two are green, this, the bottom two are red. So the top right in green counts and displays how many people have entered the metal detector. So it's like people counting. The bottom left in red counts and displays how many uh, metal detection alarms have taken place. Uh, top right in green displays the temperature of the current person passing through. Uh, and bottom right in red displays and counts how many people have entered with, with elevated temperatures. So the operator can choose to monitor via uh, the front LCD panel or by networking the door and monitoring its status through, through one of our software platforms on, on a PC. So in terms of applications, um, John, I'm sure you've been involved obviously in an awful lot of sales. So well, yes, Charlie, thank you. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> well, we, we've at this, obviously, now in Northern Ireland, Charlie, uh, we've, we've roughly 100 of these cameras sold to different, you know, with different people in Northern Ireland using them. And to my knowledge, there's about 74 of these that I'm aware of where they've been installed and, and have got feedback on how it's operated for them. <clears throat> I mean, it seems that the key areas at the moment would be healthcare settings, uh, food processing is, is, is very, very popular for us at the moment. And we've also seen it being adopted by, well, mainly the retail as well. A lot of retailers are looking at it, not at the stage yet where they're doing it for their customers that come into the shops, but more to do with at their back end where they've got uh, distribution hubs and they're trying to monitor the, the health of their staff to ensure that they can keep the business on its feet, you know, which seem to be quite popular. But in terms of applications, I mean, I find this slide can sometimes be a bit restrictive rather than opening thought up because people tend to focus on the eight uh, applications that we've put on the screen here. But, you know, really and truly anywhere at the minute where there's a footfall and a risk of infection, um, you know, the, the possibilities for putting this system in places is, is kind of endless at the minute. And, there certainly wouldn't be any limitations as to where it's used at the moment, you know. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, you'd, pro you'd probably agree, John. Probably within the next 12 months, anywhere you walk into, it's probably the first thing you'll meet in the reception area. <laughs> well, it seems to be. That's a lot of the feedback that we're getting from people. I mean, uh, some people are using the more economical range and they tend to be using that as a solution for rapid deployment so that they can get it for the customer as quickly as possible and get it set up. But then we've other businesses as well, again, mainly within that food production, which seems to be key at the moment, where they're looking at this as a continuous solution. So they're going to be, they've went for the more professional range, which has meant that the cameras can be kept a bit further back from the subject. And then they anticipate that camera being used then for years to come. So, I mean, that, that's the beauty of having the multiple different solutions. You can tailor it to suit your needs. And then even, you can always upgrade the solution. So, for example, if you went for the camera on its own just in order to get something in there quickly, um, but you felt maybe down the line that you wanted to enhance the accuracy, you can always add the black body calibrator or you can add different recorders to give yourself storage of the footage. And um, well, I'm guessing that you're going to show these people now the, uh, the Deep in Mind solution, which covered the facial recognition and the masks as well. John, John, it's John Nesbitt here. How yes, are you? Not too bad yourself. Good, good. Uh, thanks, Chuck. John, just one question. Has any of them been installed in hotels or anywhere like that? Did you, did you know of? Because I think that's an, app, that's an application. Well, personally speaking, not to my knowledge. Now, I have only visibility of, of my own customers. And I mean, in a lot of cases, John, 
we, we're working with the customers and speaking to the end users. But then there's other situations where the installers know the product inside out and they've just taken it off to their customer and sometimes you don't have to tell high vision about it. So there is a possibility, I mean, that I could speak to some of my English colleagues and see if, if there's any examples we have of it being installed at hotels. But I, I, that would be that would be good. You know, you think about it. You know, that's somewhere the first line where if someone has come to visit the country and they're going to a hotel, you want to be able to pinpoint anyone with any problems. And I'm only thinking about the COVID nineteen position at the minute. You know, mm-hmm. looks like Charlie's had a problem here. There's a few uh, questions that we can just fill in on while uh, while we're waiting on Charlie. Uh, one of the questions that's been raised here is. Does it need to be connected to an existing CCTV system or can it be standalone? Uh, probably direct that at you, John. Sorry. Um, yes. So, I mean, based on the nature of the product, what we can do is um, we could, we could, you could deploy this as part of a wider CCTV solution. Um, or you could, you could opt to make it standalone. Um, so that, that's entirely up to yourselves. We offer, like the guys at Atlas will understand that a lot of the fundamentals of this product are the same as much of our CCTV range. So you guys understand that it's all the same principles in terms of recording and network transmission and control. Mm-hmm. But we've also put the, the ranges out there to make it easy for people to just set it up on its own. So if anyone has any concerns about GDPR or security, there's, there's absolutely no need to, to put it on to the wider system, you know? Okay. Charlie, are you back again? Did you have a few technical difficulties there? Yeah, well, was it just me? That, uh... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you seem to drop out. Back, back over to you again. Sorry. Right. No, no problem at all. Thanks, John. Right, so product solution. Hold on a second now. Oh my God, I am having te- technical difficulties. Sorry, here. Sorry, lads. So product solution. So yeah, so there's, there's a few different options here. So in terms of solution one, this is what we spoke about earlier on. So literally a camera plugged into a, a PoE switch uh, on your network and then you're, you put your software then uh, on your network and you can witness the real-time alarms being sent to the software as well as your, your temperature readings overlaid on the stream. Solution two then, uh, so you can introduce a, a recorder for storage. So um, all your real-time alarms, all, all your video footage then is being recorded. You can then Go into the the, the I series MVR and actually search by temperature detection. So you can you can search and, and witness all your elevated. Uh, if there is elevated temperature alarms, you can search them all uh, within a particular timeline. Today, the last two days, the last week, whatever timeline you choose, you can search all your elevated temperature alarms. And um, you can also search because you're, you're enabling. Uh, um, the, the, the face detection algorithm within the camera, you can actually search by face capture. So you can actually search by, by faces. So you can choose, say, today and um, press search. Choose today, press uh, face capture, press search, and it'll show you all the faces that pass by that camera, that camera, that, uh, in that particular timeline you chose. Solution three is probably the more advanced one. I have, um, have more information on this coming up. So this is again yeah, introducing a, a recorder for storage. But a deeper mind is what we offer. It's an intelligent re- recorder, and you can actually um, set up an attendance health check with this. You can actually import a face database within us. So you could potentially import all the faces of um, of your employees, uh, create a, a database, import it into it, and do a, a, an attendance health check. So I have a nice slide on that coming up. I'll go into more detail on that. And then the last solution would be utilizing our handheld. So the handheld, like the Eco and the Professional, offers an accuracy of plus or minus uh, 0.5 degrees. So with, with the, the advantages of the handheld is uh, you don't actually need any physical connection between the handheld unit uh, and the laptop or, or uh, say, your phone. You literally, you'd, you'd mount it on a tripod at 1.5 meters, meters high. Uh, once it's charged, it comes with a, um, a spare battery. So you, you charge the battery within the handheld. You probably get so many hours out of it, maybe three to four, depending on, on the usage. And then you can recharge it again. Well, this 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 a spare battery then you can plug into it while the other battery is being charged. This can connect to the Wi-Fi. Uh, and then obviously once your PC or your phone is on the same Wi-Fi, um, 
you'd be able to witness then uh, real um, temperature readings on the stream itself within the software or the phone. If you're in a situation where there's no Wi-Fi in the area, uh, you can choose, you can enable hotspot within the handheld and it'll actually broadcast a Wi-Fi signal for you. And then you can connect your, your laptop, your phone to this then to witness um, uh, temperature readings overlaid on the stream itself. In terms of the, the, the app actually, so the, you see the image there of the, of the phone. Uh, this, this is an app we're offering, a HIC Thermal app. Currently with this uh, specialized HIC Thermal app, it's, uh, we've, we've introduced it to use with the handheld. You can witness, as I said, temperature readings overlaid on the stream, but it, but it doesn't receive push notifications. So, so the handheld can send alarms to that app, but the handheld can send alarms to the IVMS 4200 which is our software, you might see it there um, in the center of the screen there. So in terms of the video then, um, at this play, so this, this, is our, this is the deeper mind solution then that, that I mentioned. So uh, within the deeper mind, you get a particular type of GUI um, interface when you initially power it up. You can actually select a specialized uh, GUI. So within this GUI here, you might see at the top, there's four counters, all uh, different types of colors. So, so blue signifies the total number of people that walk past that camera today. Uh, red signifies uh, abnormal temperature. So this is telling us that 15 out of the 132 that I've entered have an abnormal temperature. Then the, the orange signifies that they're not wearing a mask. So 11 out of the 132 have entered are not wearing a mask. And then the, the last one there, 117, this, this, this is the green counter. This signifies normal temperatures. So 117 out of 132 that entered had a normal temperature. So I'll just let this play for a second. So then you have windows then down below it. So these pop up, so you can have one, one by one, two by two, three by three. So it's obviously two by two set up here, display at the moment. So you can see there in the first one there, it says normal temperature. If, if you can see it now, if you can't see it that well, I'll explain it to you. But the first green window, it says at the top normal temperature, 36 degrees. It's saying it's a stranger, so it doesn't recognize this face uh, from any face database that's imported into the NVR. It does, however, recognize that the person's wearing a mask as it has a green tick beside the mask. If you move on to the orange window there, so the orange obviously sig signifies uh, no mask. So this is telling us that this person is not wearing a mask. It's saying it's a stranger, so it doesn't recognize the face from any face database that you've imported into this NVR. It's saying at the top, you probably, you probably can't see it now, but it's saying at the top, the temperature is normal. Bottom, bottom left here, it's saying abnormal temperature. So it's a high, high temperature. So we know red signifies abnormal temperature, but uh, there's a green tick beside the mask to signify the person is wearing a mask. It's saying it's a stranger. It doesn't recognize the face. Uh, and then on the bottom, bottom right, uh, uh, we know green signifying normal temperature. So this, this is a normal temperature, 36. A uh, green tick beside the mask to say this person is wearing a mask. It recognizes the person as Leon. It's saying, welcome, Leon. So obviously, it recognizes this face from a face database that's imported into the SNVR. So you can see the detail that's, that's offered. So I've, I've explained it there, but I'll just play it so you can actually just watch the video itself. So that's that there. So it's probably the uh, the more advanced solution we're offering. So that's with that, it's a specialized um, recorder. So you can use a, a, a standard I series recorder, which the guys in Atlas can give you information on. Uh, this is a specialized recorder. So you get this specialized GUI with it. So in terms of frequently asked questions, so can the temperature screening uh, thermographic camera be installed outdoors? The answer is no. So outdoor wind and sun can easily affect the surface temperatures of human bodies and the working status of the camera, which results in a deviation between the measured skin surface temperature and the actual body temperature. So to ensure the accuracy, we strongly recommend installing indoors, away from wind, away from sun. So again, this is measuring skin surface temperature. So if you had something like this outside, obviously with uh, um, the outside temperatures, this could affect the reading of skin surface temperature. So can the camera detect multiple faces for a temperature measurement? 
So we know, yes. So camera supports up to 30 persons at any one time. We would still recommend you carry out temperature measurement person by person. So again, this, this goes back to our screening channel so you can kind of police it a little bit better. So even though the camera can detect up to, up to 30 people's uh, temperatures at any one time, create a screening channel so it's only one person's uh, temperature reading at any one time. Especially if it's just one operator there who's, who's manning the whole thing. You want to make it easy as possible for him. So will other heat sources such as tea, uh, cups, kettles, etc., uh, cause false alarms? So the cameras are able to use face detection technology, so other heat sources will not cause false alarms. So again, we're using the deep and view algorithm within the, within the GPU of the camera. So it's designed to detect the, fa detect the face, then it's going to give you the temperature reading of that face, but more specifically, uh, the temperature reading of the forehead. Uh, when can you use the temperature screening function after a camera is turned on? So the cameras need to be warmed up before using. Uh, turn them on, wait for 15 minutes with the handheld and 60 minutes uh, with the bullet and the, uh, and, and the turret. So the re reason for this is uh, the, the thermal sensor is, is a sensitive sensor. So it powered down for a period of time and then powered up. The electronics need time to heat up to a stable temperature. So the electronics basically need time to heat up and for the camera to self-calibrate. Self the likes of the handheld um, the electronics and it uh, heat up faster and it self-calibrates faster. But this is because the, this is mainly down to the housing of the uh, handheld is smaller than the housing of say, uh, the professional series or the eco series. So does a handheld uh, thermographic camera support the alarm function? And does it support VMS linkage? So we're offering two different types of handheld, but I strongly recommend you, know, you go with the the, uh, the TP21B, which Atlas can give you uh, information on. But this, this model uh, uh, will connect to, to, connect to Wi-Fi, so you don't have, any, you don't have to have any uh, physical connection between the handheld and the PC, or the handheld and, and the phone. And if there's no Wi-Fi in the area, as, as I said, you can enable a hotspot within the handheld itself, so it will broadcast a Wi-Fi signal for, you, for your laptop or your phone to connect it. Then what is a black body calibrator and what should be noticed before purchasing it? So a black body uh, calibrator is a standard temperature source. Uh, the thermographic cameras are able to calibrate based on the temperature of a black body calibrator. So the black body calibrator only needs to be powered. There's no internet connection uh, required. There's no physical connection between the calibrator and the camera itself. Um, Higg vision thermal cameras are available with a black body uh, calibrator. Uh, the use, using this calibrator will increase the accuracy and from plus or minus 0.5 degrees to plus or minus 0.3 degrees. So that's it guys. That's uh, the introduction into our uh, temperature screening um, uh, offering. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks Charlie. Uh, and thanks John. There's a few questions have, have come up just in the chat boxes and whatnot. And, and I was just going to uh, just go through them and sort of point them in, in you guys' direction. Uh, one of them is, uh, how sensitive is the facial recognition? Does the mask, stroke, no mask or headwear affect the facial recognition? Uh, no, it will still, it'll still detect the face. You've probably seen some of the videos, it will still detect, detect the face. Yep. Okay. Uh, there's another one here. Is, uh, is it common to have staff attendee for the system? Uh, obviously, most facilities have multiple interest, entries, so rerouting must occur. Uh, so yeah. basically, the, does it have to be manned all the time? No, in, so, in some cases, it's, it's unmanned. Like in, in a lot of the installations I've been uh, involved in, they, they, for the first few days, it's manned. You know, so they've an operator there to, to show the guys, the, 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 the employees, how this actually works. But some of them, uh, and then after a couple of days, then it seems to be unmanned. Now it's completely up to, it's, it's not something that we're, we're recommending. It's completely up to... Um, the particular type of, of installation. In, in some of the installations we've been involved with then, uh, apparently the ad from, from the, the employer or the manager that we've spoke to, or the installation company we've dealt with, um, that basically an email then has been sent to staff um, uh, where they where we in the body of the email to go through step by step uh, what to actually do. So in terms of, you know, walk up to the camera, walk up to the line, which potentially be 1.5 meters away from the camera, uh, wait for a second or two, uh, wait for your temperature reading, and then it literally uh, lists step by step what the employee has to do. Okay, good. 
Another one is availability. Are these solutions available now? And how long have they been in the field or available to the market? And where is it shipped from? So it's, a, it's more than just one question there. <laughs> Do you want me to take this one, Charlie? So I've, I've written a yeah. there to Michael. Um, yeah. So, I mean, naturally, in terms of availability, we're creating these items as fast as we've ever created any of our CCTV products. I'm sure the boys at Atlas can tell you that Hike Vision, or that's one of the reasons we're as successful as we are, is we, we tend to meet demand for a very busy sector for people, you know. Um, at the minute, the cameras are coming in thick and fast. We're, we're, we're actually bringing them into the UK now, where previously uh, we would have always kept our cameras in Europe and then people from the UK would have ordered them as required. But because there's been so much demand from other European countries, they've been taking that stock uh, more quickly than the UK and Ireland has. So we've now got a warehouse in the UK where we're bringing this stuff in ourselves. Um, Atlas would work with our distribution partners in order to get those products in as timely and fashion as possible. Um, so the products, there, there seems to be no problems with us in terms of the amount of stock that we're delivering. The key issue that we're dealing with now is, is really keeping up with the demand. Um, there have been products that we brought out in the past where sometimes customers have had to wait for a few days because you know we're bringing the things in as much as possible. but. I think Charlie would agree with me that the demand for this solution is unprecedented, um, especially when you consider that we're selling this internationally and the amount of people that have bought this in Italy, France, Spain and Germany especially is absolutely unbelievable. So, how, how, many, how many systems would you have sold, John, approximately worldwide? Well, Oh, worldwide, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. We, we can only look at our own region because, well, Hike, Hike Vision is, uh, Charlie and I work for Hike Vision UK and Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, and I could, hang on a second, I'll give you an accurate answer as of 12 o'clock today. Um, just bear with me, folks. So as of number of cameras ordered, Total. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're trending at 1,754. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's fair to say there's quite a few systems out there? There's systems out there. I mean, again, I can't get too much into the details of a lot of the customers that we're, we're, we're working with, I suppose, because it's their business as well. But mm -hmm. like this has been deployed in NHS sites, multiple NHS sites, multiple health service sites in the Republic of Ireland as well. Um, and most people that have initially bought some of the cameras to sort of try them out have all went on to subsequently place orders for more cameras for more of their entrances or more of their facilities, you know. Okay. Uh, another question just come up is uh, what is the price range for the options large and small? And do, the, do you provide installation services or is it easy enough for most professionals to install? So I know Pete, our Atlas account managers there, maybe if uh, I'll point that in Pete's direction. Thanks, Graham. Yeah, um, in terms of solutions and, and costings, obviously everything's pretty much different. There is a variety of, of different solutions there, the, the, the higher end professional range and the eco range. Um, and then obviously depending on the amount of entries, point of entries, point of exits of, of a building. It is very difficult to put a, a finite cost on it. I suppose the best uh, way forward would be if anyone does think that they can apply this to their site or their company is just to give us a shout and then we can discuss it and sort of narrow it down at least into the, the pro range or the weaker range and we can go, kind of go from there. But as it stands at the minute, because it's so bespoke to each site, it would be difficult to put a, a finite price on it. But Okay. Okay. No problem. Uh, I think there's one other question has has come in. Uh, uh, no, I don't think that's. I don't think there's any other questions. Just uh, I would like to take this opportunity. Thank you to both Charlie and John for your input, and thank you for everybody for joining us. If you have any other questions, please just give us a call. 
Uh, also would appreciate, there's a feedback poll that will pop up at the end of the webinar. I would really appreciate a bit of, of, of feedback, should it be uh, positive or negative or whatever, just to, to, to see how we can uh, improve things in relation to these webinars. And uh, as, as apart from that, I would just like to wish everybody uh, a good afternoon and, and stay safe and take care. That's great. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, Pete. Thanks very much, Graham and Pete, and to all the panelists and participants. If there's anyone still on the chat, just to say that, you know, if you do want maybe to organise another uh, web conference where you're directly with maybe one of the Hike Vision team or on, on one of the Atlas guys to maybe answer stuff a wee bit more directly, you know, to, to do with your site, um, feel free to ask the Atlas boys to do that. And I mean, the Atlas boys will say we, we, we'll always support them as best we can, you know. Well, Charles, thanks very much. John Nesbitt here. Charles, thanks very much. That was great. Uh, John, oh, thank you for your help as usual. Uh -huh. uh, it's great. Great job. Talk to us all later. All, all right. right. Take care, lads. All the best. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.